One of the things I wanted to show you was just some of the things about uh, the Mac OS Leopard. We're already in it right now. And uh, what I wanted to... going to come out with Puma. I like Puma. <laughs> I think the next one's going to be Kitty Cat. <laughs> anyway, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing here. And basically what you have in the bottom is you have this dock has changed radically. You have this little thing behind it, which is kind of interesting, this little, uh, it's got a little table for all of your dock icons to set on, which is a little distracting. And one of the things is if you have a file down here on the desktop, it's reflective. So not only do you get a reflection of whatever the icons are, you also get a reflection of anything that's on the desktop. So in this case, I'm getting reflections of this file down here and it makes it hard to read. And so that's a little bit of a problem. But you do have a saving grace. If you go over here, and right between the separation between the applications in the dock and the documents. Which is incredibly tough to see, I'm noticing. Yeah, you can also go up to the uh, menu bar, the Apple menu, go to dock and say position to the right. Now if you position to the right, it gets rid of the table and makes it a little more like the traditional dock that we've seen in the past. I'll zoom in so you can see that a little better. One other thing that's changed in the dock is over here to the right, you can see these little white dots. And basically these little white dots are the replacement for the black triangles that used to be next to there indicating which applications are open and running. And so that's what they've done there that's a little bit different. Um, also in the top, you may have noticed up here in the finder bar, that it has kind of a bluish tint, and that's because the menu bar and the submenus are transparent, so that you see whatever's behind there. And in this case, with the desktop picture that I have, it's not too bad. It does make it kind of a, a, a light blue, um, but if I choose something like a different uh, desktop background, let me just uh, right click and say change desktop background, and if I choose one of the nature images, like say these little fish things, then suddenly up here it gets a little bit harder to read. Or if I come down to plants and I choose uh, this shot, it makes it a little bit harder to try to read the things that are in here because of that transparency. Um, it's not too bad, but it is a little bit harder to try to see because things are actually showing up in the background. I'm not sure, there's no real advantage to this. It doesn't make it more usable and there's no way to turn it off. There are a few hacks that are actually out there on the web that you could try out though to try to remove that transparency feature. Um, but if you change your desktop pictures a lot, I mean you could go into Photoshop and put a white bar at the top to make it more readable. But otherwise it's, it's likely to create a little bit of a uh, chaos and confusion for you to be able to see. I just don't like that contrast. It's a very vista. It, it has no real purpose. It just, it looks nice, I guess, but I mean, it's... It's sort of like, Andy, some people doesn't bother. Yeah. Me, it's driving me nuts because of some of the desktop pictures I use and they change constantly. It makes it hard to read, particularly on my laptop where everything's small anyway. It's really hard, which brings me to another point that I don't particularly like. If, uh, if I open, say, my hard drive here, and you have this little, um, what's that called, the column on the left, Sidebar. sidebar. Thank you. Okay. Our, our cameraman just told me, reminded me that sidebar. So the sidebar over here on the side, everything's smaller. It used to be on the old one you could actually resize things a little bit, make it bigger, resize the window, and it would uh, make things bigger so that you could see everything that you needed to see. But now you can't. There's no way to blow this up to make it bigger to see, and it makes it a little difficult to be able to see these things. So I'll blow it up so you can see. Uh, the icons have changed. While this icon here looks like the old traditional icon and it's real easy at a glance in those small file sizes to see what they are, that's not always the case for the files that are over here. Boy, this is skipping really Woo. fast. Woo. In here, if I'm looking at the hard drive, the applications that are in here, I'll view these as icon view and pull this out. It's a little harder to tell the difference between the different icons because they made them all the same color of the system. The users, system, applications, library, they're all blue with some darker blue um, sort of logo on each one of those. So instead of having some color to indicate a blue X on a, you know, mostly white um, icon isn't there, the library with a book on there, it's a little harder to make out things with the system icons. I'm not sure why they did that. It doesn't make it more functional. It actually makes it a bit more dysfunctional. Which uh, is something that I... Uh, yeah. Well, if you know your way around the Mac, you can change the... Icons, you sure can. But and if you don't know, you, you can go right-click on it and choose Get Info. And you click right up here on it, and you can change the icon. You can paste, copy and paste in whatever image that you want to do to be able to do that. Okay. Um, one other thing I did notice that if you do like using Safari, and of course you don't have to use Safari, but if you do, I noticed that this is darker than it used to be. 
And one of the problems I have with that is that it's harder to read my shortcuts on here because it's black on top of a dark gray. And the dark gray is not really the, uh, the best way to mm -hmm. have a good contrast. And there's no way to change that, to customize that. Firefox has far more customizations. One thing they did add, though, that you've been able to do in Firefox for a while is the ability to move your tabs around. Yes. So now you can click on and say, you know, I have a couple of tabs here. I have my Yahoo page up and Ask the Techies page. And I think I actually want the Yahoo one to be first. I can click and drag, and now the Yahoo one is the first one. So, yeah, it kind of slides around, which is it's a really nice feature to be able to do that. Anyway, those are first looks, some things you might want to know about it. Um, we're going to give you more tips coming up, uh, some of the things about guest accounts. Uh, they have a lot of new features. Um, we'll, we'll be bringing you more uh, next week. Yeah, yeah, and if you have anything that you'd like to mention about it that you find cool, tell us on our, our either Absolutely. email us or tell us in our comment section. Put in the comment section at our Ask the Techies video podcast blogspot address. And it's at the end of this video. The address is on there. But if you do a Google search, if you watch our previous videos. You do a Google search. It's that one right there. And there's a comment section underneath each video and you can add your own comments. Do that. Tell us about what your view is about the transparency or if you know a good fix that you could recommend to people for getting rid of that transparency in the menu bar. Um, I'm just someone with whose vision is starting to go as I'm getting a little bit older. And so these things really drive me nuts on my laptop. It's not as bad here where we have everything blown up really nice and large, uh, but it's more of a problem when your screen's at a high resolution. It makes it real difficult to try to see. So anyway, more tips coming up next week. All right? Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. See you later.